What's going on guys here at 11 a great day today and today we are back to talk about some more Demon Slayer Swordsmith Village arc. This is episode number 5 titled Bright Red Sword. Before I get into my thoughts I want to hear from you guys so head on down to the comment section below and let me know what you thought of this episode if you've seen it and while you're there I'd really appreciate if you could leave a like on this video and subscribe if you're a fan of anime and Japanese gaming content and want to see plenty more Demon Slayer coverage in the future. The village struggles against the swarm of attacking demon fish until Mitsuri arrives and defeats them with ease. She makes her way to the chief's house where a giant demon fish has wiped out the demon slayer guards. Using her love breathing technique, she takes down the demon, saving the chief and surviving swordsmiths in the area. Muichiro and Kotetsu find and help Kanamori, who agrees to take them to his work shed where Muichiro's new sword is. They're met by upper rank 5 Gyoko and his artwork, a horrific amalgamation of swordsmiths with broken limbs and blades stuck into them. Nezuko awakens after being knocked out and runs away from Hantengu's clones with Tanjiro. The building is destroyed and the demons search for the two siblings amongst the rubble. Tanjiro begs Nezuko to let go of his sword so he can help her get out from under the debris, but she refuses, and we soon find out the purpose of her holding onto the blade, to use her blood demon art to create a flaming sword. In a stance that reminds the demons of the swordsman who struck fear in Muzan, Tanjiro uses a new version of Hinakami Kagura, Sun Halo Dragon Head Dance, to behead three of them. Just after this we find out that Genya beheaded the fourth, but he turns around with eyes and fangs like a demon himself. The best way I can describe this episode to you is saying that it is just ufotable in their element. And I know the like animation director or whatever behind this episode was the one that had done a lot of the other great sequences we'd seen in Demon Slayer, whether it's episode 19 of season one that he did, very iconic episode two Demon Slayer fans, and then I think episode 10 of Entertainment District arc, which once again, a fantastic episode, probably the best episode of that season where we got the fight between Tengen coming back and fighting against Gyotaro. He's the guy that's done this episode and you can see that when you look at that Tanjiro sequence the animation was mind-blowing I just sat there in complete awe I had an audible reaction to it which is something I don't usually have when I'm watching action in anime and I haven't had it this season of Demon Slayer so far maybe the last time I had like an audible reaction to the quality of the visuals was episode 10 of the entertainment district arc yeah once again it proves it like demon slayer kind of has um that effect on people even prior to this incredible moment though the rest of the episode was awesome seeing mitsuri in action for the first time that was great her sword there is something about it that is so badass it is like a whip i have no idea how it works i kind of don't want them to explain it because there's a uh, something very satisfying about it just being like it is it doesn't need an explanation not everything does need to be explained some things can just exist to be very very cool and that is one of them we have only seen her love breathing in action once but i don't really understand it i can get like mist breathing i can get water breathing fire breathing because you know they're elements but love breathing love is a feeling like how does that work as like an attack really sure it's cool to look at but i do kind of need an explanation behind like its um effect on other people much like with episode 4 we do get some more hints towards muichiro's backstory this time gyoko kind of calls him worthless and it almost triggers this memory of like a hot summer's day and something about leaving the door open that's probably going to hint towards something bad happening because of that reason and we do kind of get I guess it's a demon something I'm not 100% sure like I said this is just like kind of brief images and hints towards things there's nothing really concrete nothing that we can use to give us a great idea of all the stuff that's going on in his past I like what I'm seeing from Ruichiro so far he's definitely a character that is growing on me and I, I know a lot of people say that he is the best Hashira so I'm very excited to learn more about his backstory and see him more in this season so I can really judge whether or not I share the same opinion as them. The big story takeaway of this episode though is definitely that ending scene with Genya. What the hell is going on with this character? I said it last episode, how did he manage to survive all that stuff? Well it would probably make sense if somehow he can become a demon. Now I don't think it's going to be as straightforward as he has turned into a demon, it's definitely not that. But um, yeah, very very intriguing stuff. That's the only Genya content we really get from this episode. And like I said last time with episode 4, his character I did not expect to be interested in or intrigued by in this season, but he's uh, shaping up to be one of the most interesting characters. But overall, this was another fantastic action-oriented episode of Demon Slayer. From start to finish, I had a great time with it. Loved seeing Mitsuri in action. Loved seeing a bit more of Muichiro as well, and of course... That sequence with Tanjiro using the Sun Halo Dragon head dance. Badass, incredible animation. Just keep it coming, you vertible. You are well and truly knocking it out of the park with this adaptation. Before I do get out of here though, I'd really appreciate if you could leave a like on this video and subscribe if you're a fan of anime and Japanese gaming content. If you want to see plenty more Demon Slayer coverage in the future, I do talk about the Soulsmith Village arc on a weekly basis. I'm finally kind of caught up. 
I know episode 6 has come out today and I'll get a review out for that way before we get to episode 7. So yeah, I, I guess we're kind of up to date with things now. I'm really sorry for being far behind. I will try not to do it again. No promises though. Above all else, I want to hear from you guys. So head on down to the comments section below and let me know what you thought of this episode. If you've seen it, who was your favorite character within this episode? Was it seeing Mitsuri in action? Was it Uitro stuff that was going on with him? Or was it the big action sequence with Tanjiro? But as always, thank you so much for tuning into my chat today and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.